having me. Have you heard? People use drugs. 60% of the population of adults has used a substance in the last 30 days. Look, two to your left, two to your right. <laughs> One of you has used an illicit substance in the last 30 days. We're not alone, we're not alone. And using substances is not a moral failing. It's not a moral failing, even though years and years of systemic experience has taught us that. It is not a moral failing. And when used inappropriately, potentially can lead itself to a substance use disorder. Here we go. There's a dichotomy, though, for those patients who develop a substance use disorder and a failure of addiction care in our healthcare system. Traditionally, the healthcare system is patient centered, where patients are surrounded by highly trained health professionals to support those patients in a variety of different ways, whether that is by diagnosis and screening, access to medication in your pharmacy, through behavioral health support and peer recovery support. These are critical components. However, we know our healthcare system is failing patients with substance use disorder, whether that's because of regulatory models of separating different types of care or because we have that stigma still embedded in us that substance use is related to moral versus actually substance use and use disorder is related to disease. Now, other models of care, on the other hand, have generated community-based harm reduction models, which really understand that drug use is complex, it's multifaceted, and that we understand that abstinence is not the only answer, that we can improve people's lives by just changing our approach to care. However, oftentimes these harm reduction models are not com combined, excuse me, with the access and availability of that secondary prevention and care that's necessary from a healthcare system. So the UIC COIP mobile medical unit sought to combine those components and really meet people where they are, where there are healthcare deserts, pharmacy deserts, where there's just disassociation of care for patients, or the patients felt that they were stigmatized when they actually showed up to our clinics. Now, it absolutely takes a village to make these things occur. So you can see lots across this, the campus have, have been a support of this, as well as we needed to think outside of the box of our healthcare system, find wheels to get to the patients, be funded by our state who, who have, provides a high priority for this as well as connect with our Department of Public Health and recognize in real time where our opioid overdose is happening and how can we meet patients exactly where they are, where they are needed. Now, we know that this type of care can improve patient outcomes and save lives from a healthcare perspective, but we also know that it can benefit patients by meeting them where they are and providing them with harm reduction services, such as syringes and naloxone. Thank you so much for having me today. This is my first time on YouTube, so I want to say, hi, mom, I love you. <laughs>